you look at general? Can you just talk about the guys you picked today to get going? Yeah, so Eric Gray is a guy you know we liked. He was at the Senior Bowl, uh, played at Oklahoma, obviously transferred from Tennessee, super productive, uh, really good hands out of the backfield. Um, you know, also has some elusiveness to him inside. So, uh, like what he brings, you know, he also has done some returns in his past. You know, he did some at Tennessee, uh, comfortable catch and punts at the Senior Bowl. So, you know, again, he'll come in and compete with our group. Trey Hawkins, you know, took him late in the sixth, you know, from Old Dominion, uh, corner, you know, height, weight, speed prospect that, you know, has high upside. He's a physical kid, not afraid to tackle. You, know, you kind of see a trend with some of these guys that we took at that position. Um, you know, good developmental prospect for Winks. Uh, defense and, you know, projects well to spe special teams due to his physical traits and, and toughness. Uh, Jordan Riley, um, you know, again, big body guy. It's hard to find these guys. So when you get into the seventh round, um, you know, you're looking for guys that, you know, maybe it'll be hard to get, you know, different areas. And um, another guy we spent some time with, you know, big run stopper in there, you know, 6'5", 330, you know, with really good length. So. Um, you know, again, he'll compete for a depth role there. And then uh, Gio, uh, Javaris Owens, um, another guy we like, you know, tall, long, athletic safety uh, from University of Houston, was out at the East-West game. Um, you know, another physical kid, you know, projects well to, you know, special teams and, you know, will also compete for a depth role. So, um, you know, excited with the group of guys we got, you know, all have very good traits, um, you know, competing for different roles, but, you know, excited with the group. And then, um, get the text here soon that the draft's over and you know now we're working on the second draft you know with free agency uh college free agency which is an exciting time for us can you talk a little bit more about riley just the process of finding him? he's not somebody that was uh listed by too many drafts. yeah i mean he's at oregon so like it, you walk out to practice and there's this six five 330 pound guy and you know it, it piques your interest right there so again some of these guys in different schemes may not have you know the production the tackles the the sacks, but you know, for what Wink looks for in terms of size, length, knockback, um, you know, he he possesses those traits. So, can you talk about the the whole thing overall? Did you fill all the needs you want, or are there still things out there, or what? Yeah, we're always going to be looking to continue to improve. You know, we'll never be satisfied. So, we'll continue. Um, again, right now is another opportunity to add, add players and depth and competition with the college free agency process. And then we'll have a rookie mini camp on, uh, you know, next weekend. So we'll have some players that will be here for that. So, yeah, again, did, did we, you know, ideally you have a bunch of you know, 53 pro bowlers, but that's impossible. So we'll continue to, you know, find out maybe, maybe where we need to add depth, where we, you know, maybe lied on a starter or whatever it may be. But we'll continue to add depth and competition at all times. Joe, you at the start, start of the offseason you talked about how you want to add depth along the defensive line, which you've obviously done. Um, do you feel like you have enough depth on the, uh, among edge rushers? Um, yeah, and that's something, again, we can, we can continue to look for that. You know, again, I think we have, um, you know, Ellerson Smith coming back. He's a young prospect that showed promise but had an injury last year. Uh, Timon Fox is a guy we like. So uh, those guys have all played snaps, and, you know, we're excited about them. And, you know, we, we may add a couple tonight or, you know, again, we continue to look at our emergency list. So we're always weighing those two things. What's available, you know, post-draft, you know, based on how teams drafted over the weekend, there may be a surplus of players that come available next week. So we'll continue to look at all positions. We'll measure where we are, if we like our group or not. And, you know, again, we don't, we don't play till September in terms of the regular season. So, you know, if there's, we're devoid of something somewhere, we'll continue to look. Brian, uh, um, Gray was saying he, has, he feels he has natural hands. And, um, uh, how important is that, you know, for you, for a running back, for your offense? I mean, you know, he, you know, he seems to project like he could potentially be a three-down guy. Yeah, no, we'll see. Um, again, I, I just go back to, I think, the question you asked, Bob. Look, we're always going to look to add and improve, you know, all the way through the season, you know, from on Tuesdays when we have off. So, uh, and just in terms of Gray, I think he's a, a very mature young player, uh, has had some production, does have good hands. Um, how that sorts out, and you know, that'll be up to him. Um, you know, the cool thing about it is after their rookie weekend and they come back, you know, then we'll finally have a an auditorium full of full of seats, so the coaches will be standing on the side and we'll finally have you know kind of a full full auditorium to start working with. Joe, I wanted to ask you a little bit about your process in terms of the trades the first two days, because uh, I thought it was interesting. Sometimes you see. 
GMs who might not have the trust of other teams, of guys that you talk to. Like you mentioned, the, the deal you have with Trent Baalke. You guys obviously exchanged information. For you, how important is that to build those relationships where you're kind of sharing some of your plans? I mean, I know there are some guys who don't want to give away too much information, feel like maybe it comes back to burn them. And do you feel like that has helped your process? Yeah, I think, again, a lot of these, Trent and I were area scouts back in the day. So, you know, we've, we've got a long, long relationship or, you know, some of the new GMs, Quasi, you know, in Minnesota, um, we become fast friends through this process. We were first year GMs together. So you always try to cultivate those relationships throughout the, throughout the league, because when you're thinking about, hey, I may trade player X, you know, maybe my name comes to them first that they're going to call me or whatever it may be. You always want to be in the mix if a team's going to trade a guy. So I think it's always important to have relationships, you know, with the general managers and personnel staffs of the other teams because it can lead to deals or, you know, maybe it's easier to get a trade done or, or whatever it may be. So um, definitely in that group where we were picking on, you know, specifically Thursday night, I had a good relationship with a lot of those guys. So um, they were easy conversations. We could shoot each other straight, and you know, luckily it worked out. Are you ever, are you ever fearful of giving up too much information and it might come back to? The yeah, you definitely have to be careful of that. Yeah, you definitely have to be careful of that. But if that was, if a trade was contingent on, you know, you giving up the information, you might as well, you know, that's your only chance to get there. So um, it, there was, there's some risk involved if you do that. So looking back, uh, compared to maybe what you thought coming into the draft. But what would you have thought if I told you, you know, you're going to get Bank, Schmitz, and uh, Hyatt in the first two days of the draft? Yeah, I would have liked to know how you're going to do that, probably. <laughs> like, it really wasn't, uh, again, it, you never know how it's going to fall. Like, we, we went through a million scenarios. We didn't know who was going to be there at 25, or we ended up training it up to 24. So you really don't know. And then things get a little bit more, you know, once you get into that second round, you really don't, you know, it's everybody sees things differently and, you know, has different flavors for type of players they like. So you may have a guy in the fifth round and he goes in the second, you know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder on, you know, as you go through the entire draft, usually the first round kind of goes, um, you know, as planned, the, the, the group of players you think are going to go. Um, but, I, you know, I'm thrilled with those guys. I'm thrilled with some of the, the prospects we got today. You know, I mean, just uh, we'll see, um, you know, and the coaching staff's motivated for, to work with all the guys that we drafted and, you know, they're going to come in, they're going to, you know, assimilate into our culture and work hard and we'll see what happens. But everybody's going to compete for their, their spots. I'm happy with where we are and, um, you know, it's a good group of guys to, to work with and continue to build. Joe, this isn't a draft question, but I don't know when the next time we'll talk to you will be, do you plan to like, re-engage in negotiations with Saquon or are you just saying he's playing on the tag this year? So where do you kind of foresee that? Yeah, we'll, we'll have conversations with him. We have, we, we had conversations last week, so. Joe, um, Actually, both of you guys, uh, maybe even more, Brian. Do you would you like, assuming Saquon's going, uh, going by the assumption that Saquon's going to be here play this year, would you like to, and you drafted a running back, decrease his snaps? Like, uh, do you find that sustainable for a running back to play eighty plus percent of the snaps like like he did last year? And is that part of the reason why you wanted to add to that position? Yeah, I'd say it's probably a better question during the season. You know, we're in. The, what is it? It's not April 17th. What is it? April what? 29th. 29th. So <laughs> I mean, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Was it important to you that he, that you drafted a running back and it was a guy who could catch the ball out of the backfield? No, I mean, look, what I tell, what I tell Joe and, and the scouts is find good players, um, people that we can, you don't necessarily always agree, uh, whether it's scout to scout, coach to scout, coach to coach. Um, but you, you sit down, you talk about these players. I'm excited about all these players. I think there was a lot of, um, a lot of good discussions, um, and I think you just find good players. And then your job as a coaching staff, and I'll say this, you know, until I'm done coaching, is get good players and find a way to use them. You know, so, like, necessarily you have a playbook, but our playbook really isn't finished quite yet. You know, we just added some players, and we got to do a good job as a staff, too, of going out there on the practice field and trying different things and seeing how people respond and running different routes or, you know, doing some different blocking schemes or, you know, again, every playbook it, for me, I'd say the last five or six years has just been a little bit different. And that's based on the players that you have. So as a coach, uh, like I tell Joe, find good players, man. These guys have been working their tails off since, 
you know, really the start of last draft at the end of it. And, you know, the coaches have been working hard to try to evaluate them. And again, you, you don't know what you're going to get until they're out there doing it too. So uh, that's why we're big on competition. We're excited about the players we have, but, um, you know, we'll throw them in the mix and let them compete it out. How much does Gray's skill set lend itself to the potential to be a passing down option early in his career? Yeah, we'll see. I mean, we'll start looking at him in rookie minicamp. I mean, it's, again, I think they all have a good skill set. We've spent a lot of time watching tape and, and talking to some of these guys, but until they're out there doing the things on the grass in front of you, um, and you can tweak things, you know, there's, there's times where you thought you were getting something, you know, one draft with a the player, then all of a sudden you're like, man, this guy can really do this a little bit better than I thought. So you start doing that more. So um, they all have fair opportunity to go out there and, and prove what they can do to see if they can help us. Joe, your, uh, your conversations with Saquon last week, would you characterize those as negotiations or was that more like touching base again and saying after yeah, the draft? Touching base again. Touching base yeah, again. Touching base again and we'll circle up after the draft. Where are you trying to plan on Joe? Because um, there was the contract that was off uh, offered originally. Contract was off the table. I mean, would you plan on offering another revised extension to Saquon in the coming week? Yeah, we'll talk this coming week now that the draft's over. So we'll kind of reconvene and see if it makes sense or not. You know, through those through dialogue with his representative. With where you guys are cap wise, do you need to make a move? Do you have something planned, or are you good like just to get through and now the draft's over? So if we need to, we have we have moves that we can make to free up cap space. So yeah, we're working through some things over the next couple of weeks. Since we're on topic of, of contracts, where do you think stand with Dexter Lawrence in those negotiations? Same deal. Once it, like let's get through the draft. You know, his representation has a lot of you know had a lot of prospects in the draft, and you know we were focused on the draft in our meetings. So you know next week things will calm down a little bit, and we'll we'll circle back up with with everybody. Joe, how uh, from your vantage point, how unusual is what the Eagles are doing? leaning so hard into one program with Georgia. I mean, can you think of any other time that a team has done this, like drafting so many players and acquiring so many players from one team? And is, does that come with risks or? Well, if you're going to do it, that's a good program to do it from, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I, you have to ask them that. I'm not really sure. I, you know, sometimes your board just falls that way. Um, but uh, yeah, they've, they've got a lot of, uh, a lot of Georgia players <laughs> down the road. So uh, I, I, I don't know if they necessarily consciously are doing that or again I'm assuming their board fell that way. Joe, do you feel good about this draft? I do. I do. Yeah. And I mean it's not just this draft. This is one piece of the the off season puzzle. So, you know, we um you know, I think you tie in free agency and you tie in, you know, the draft and then, you know, I'm excited to go upstairs and see where we are on some of the undrafted free agents and um, kind of how I started off it never stops. Like we're always going to be looking to to upgrade and add depth and competition. So where we are now, um, you know, I feel good, but again, we still got to get these guys on the, the field and, you know, the, all these guys are young, you know, these draft picks are young. They're coming from various spots. You know, some of them haven't been in New York City. Some of them have, you know, they're pros now. So, you, you know, there's a human element too as these guys develop. So um, we're not going to put a lot of pressure on them to, you know, be plug and play and, you know, we'll, we'll let them develop and learn and, you know, we'll continue to grow in our culture. And, uh, but right now, yeah, I, I feel good about where we are and, you know, I'm, you know, the staff, we have continuity amongst the staff, you know, this off season, which, you know, along with the roster building, you know, I think that's very important. Joe, there's so much in the draft, you know, so much publicity, ratings, you know, every, everything, it's so much. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about the he killed it narrative? You know what I mean? Yeah, no, it's, um, that, that lasts about two days. No, I mean, you don't win games in April. I mean, it's the, the social media rankings and everything like that, you know, that's, it's about what we do this fall and, you know, how we go out there and compete, um, you know, when it matters and how we continue to build this off season and get bigger, faster, stronger through our strength program. And then, you know, how we prepare and execute in August, you know, I think there's a process and um, do I like some of the, you know, the guys we drafted? Yeah. Um, but still, like Dave said, you know, in this press conference, every year is different and the team's got to gel and we got to build chemistry. There's, we got to stay healthy. There's a lot that goes into it. If you're in this a long time, when do you think you'll be able to look at a sheet of one of the years of the draft and look back and say, yeah, I think I, we killed it. That was good. <laughs> you know, when would that The minute happen? after the draft? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're talking about the minute after the yeah. draft? I mean, when would you think you'd be able to look back and, and at a sheet? Would it be next yeah, year? Three or four, you know, I think it's three or four years yeah. when you look back at it and you look at the play time. But you're, you're never, 
you can't get complacent in this business ever. Like that, it, it's you'll be you'll be you'll be have a lot of trouble if you do that. So again, we're we're always looking to get better, regardless where it is. I mean, we'll never be complacent. We'll always strive, and there'll be a standard to you know of excellence, and we'll continue to strive for that. Joe, you think back to last year. I remember you guys being here joking about the draft room and the you know the magnets <laughs> you had. Yeah. And then we saw the video of your new you know modernized draft room. Yeah. That's because we picked 25 and not five, so he didn't want to carry all those magnets around. So he, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was he easy. Begged to our owners for a new draft room. <laughs> so. But setting it up, you obviously wanted things a certain way. You had ideas last year. Yeah. I'm curious now after this draft. Uh, one of the things I noticed was it looked like you guys had FaceTimes with the entire room on the screens with your prospects. I mean, was that part of it? You wanted to make it more of a team thing for everyone in that room? Yeah, it's a, it's a really neat feature, and we could use that pre-draft because you can, you can zoom with the prospects. So if there was ever a scenario where Dave's, myself, Wink, Jerome wanted to get in there and, hey, let's, let's zoom with this prospect and talk ball, and we could all be in there and you know, have those type of meetings if we wanted to, our medical meetings. It's a universal room that we can use for you know, free agency, draft, medical meetings, uh, zooming prospects. So just trying to upgrade the t technology the best we could and you know, make it multifaceted in terms of how we can utilize it. And um, we did that. So one of the cool things that you know, we wanted to do was FaceTime the prospects afterwards into the draft room and just congratulate them one more time on, on coming to the team. So you know, just a cool feature of the room that you know, I think is a nice touch probably for the players. Uh, normally, it would just be a couple of you guys, right, that, that would get a chance to interact with the prospect. Yeah. There you had you yeah, your scouts, you yeah. your scouts, ownership. Everything. Yeah. I mean, is that important to you to make sure that this entire, you know, aspect of it is, is the full team and not just? Yeah, absolutely. Like, like Dave was saying, those, you know, the scouts are away from their families a lot during the year, a lot of miles on the road, a lot of you know, hotel points and, um, you know, all-star games and then being here for weeks at a time away from their family. So there's a lot of hard work that goes into it, you know, from the medical staff and all the, um, you know, all the guys that they look at at the combine, the calls they make for us. I mean, go on and on about it's really all hands on decks and a, and a true team effort, you know, to put this thing together. I assume in the next, you know, 48 to 72 hours, you get the free agents signed. What do you guys, when do you guys decompress? <laughs> Every time I think, like when you come in in the morning and there's like nothing going on, like you got to take advantage of it because, you know, sure enough, somebody comes through the door at some point and the day you thought you were going to have all this free time turns into, you know, three or four things you got to deal with. So um, I think now that I've, I've kind of, I've actually thought about this, uh, you know, hopefully next week at some point I can, but, you know, it was a different process for me. I've kind of been full circle now because when I got here, I had already seen 500 prospects. I had a really good feel for the draft. You know, this year I hadn't been through a season as a general manager and trying to watch film and see prospects and all that stuff. So now that I've kind of been through the whole thing full circle, you know, I think next week will be a good opportunity to, um, you know, for me, I think I'll be able to decompress a little bit. You found yourself relying Last more on others, like from that, like you said, with this year you had other things to worry about. Like, did you find yourself relying on others on your staff more heavily? Oh, yeah, you absolutely. Could... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you have to be able to delegate in this position and get you know the right people in the right chairs and let them do their jobs. And um, you know, we've got a good group throughout the building. You know, in a, in, in a lot of seats.